and welcome. This is your paint box and my name is Katherine Gray and today we are going to be painting the little oak leaf and the acorn to go with our squirrel project for October and I'm so glad to have you here. If this is your first lesson I'll take you step by step and try to keep it really simple and really easy and we're going to have a good time. I usually have a guest in the studio with me but today I'm here by myself so you're just going to have to see if I can keep you entertained and we'll get ready to start step one. Okay, painters, we're going to start the acorn and the oak leaf. And what we're gonna do is just take your brush, get it a, dip in the water, get it a little bit wet, and then uh, dip it in the second yellow, that's the deep mustard yellow, and it's called yellow ochre. And there, I just kind of loosened it up and got it a little bit wet. And I'm going to do, mark my parameters, which is something we do in drawing. I'm going to just mark the center of each side of the canvas. And that'll give us some guidelines. So drawing's all about guidelines and, and figuring out the size of things. Um, so what we've done by marking the center, I now see here that I can, uh, the left side of my analytical brain, the left side of the brain saying that the center of that tip of that leaf, the end of that leaf is right there at that center. So I'm just going to draw that a little bit. And I see that the top of that leaf is just below center, just about a quarter of an inch from the edge. And that the, the uh, curve of this bottom part of the leaf comes down right there also, right at about center. So now I'm going to have an idea of how to do one, two scoops up to the top of this leaf. So kind of like one, two little curves as we meet the big curve at the top. And then we're going to have one, two, three, four curves before we meet the top here. So I'm just going to come up and go one, two, three, and four. And yeah, every leaf's going to be a little different, so don't worry if yours is a little different. All right, so then I'm going to come here, I'm just going to draw a little bit of that leaf and we're going to start the acorn. I see that the uh, Right here about the one quarter mark, a little further over, is the top of the acorn shell. And it has a little cap, looks like a little hat, a little beanie. And then we're gonna come down, make that little acorn shape. And then just for a guideline, I'm gonna just go ahead and put that center, well, I'm gonna just put a couple of those leaf marks on there. So the drawings I keep pretty simple and quick and clean. Um, so if you need a little time to catch up and maybe adjust your drawing, make sure you're happy with it. Uh, pause the video and then, uh, you know, I might even make some changes while we pause the video myself. See, I'm making a change or two here. So pause the video when you're ready to start step two. We'll see you there. Well, we are back here ready to start step two, and that's the background. So uh, what I'm going to do, we're gonna make this nice soft golden brown. We can pretend that's maybe a, a bed of pine needles or older leaves laying on the ground. So I'm going to take, um, let's take maybe the burnt umber brown. That's your dark, dark chocolate brown, burnt umber. Take a little of that and let's take this yellow ochre and see if we can mix that up to get a little bit of a golden brown, maybe a little more gold in there. I really like that. It's gonna have a little more gold. And I like to have a little variety, so I'm gonna make another shade. I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna take that dark chocolate brown, and I'm, this time I'm gonna mix a little bit of the very red brown. Let's put some gold in it now and see if that's kind of a different reddish gold brown. That's very nice, I like that. So if you're joining me for the first time or if you're new and you need me to remind you that the palette knife is like a spatula. So, you know, you can't use it all the way back here. It's really only usable at the end where it's kind of bendy. So about that first inch of your spatula, I mean, of your palette knife is where you want to keep the paint uh, while you're mixing. You just a little mixing knife and it's flexible to make your mixing easier. 
So I'm going to take those two colors. We're going to work with these two colors at first. Um, I am going to hold my brush back. You don't want to get in the habit of holding it up like a pencil. You want to hold it back. And I'm reaching over here and I'm going to just sweep up that paint. I don't want to stab it and break the bristles backwards. So I'm pulling those bristles towards me. And then I'm just going to start laying that down. Oops, a crisscross motion. I'm going to pick up that darker color and see if that looks pretty mixed in with it. I think it does. It looks really nice. So we talked about it in my class today. We can't believe fall is here. It's October here in Louisville, Kentucky. So it's pretty warm out there still today. Um, you see I'm sliding that paint, just sliding it. And I make little bitty crisscross, long, little bit long strokes. The, the, the paint, oil paint is so lovely because it does slide under the brush and that feeling of the paint sliding under the brush, once you really can gain control of it, it's just a wonderful feeling. Uh, it, it's just almost a tactile experience when you're spreading paint. It's like spreading butter or peanut butter. That's what they refer to oil paint as the buttery medium because the oil just makes it all nice and slippery, unlike acrylics where you get kind of a sticky feeling when you're painting. So I keep sweeping. These little paintings I like to just hold in my hand like this. I'm pulled down on the table. It's, they're a little too small to get up on an easel. I will be having my more advanced lessons that are longer that you can purchase by video and those will be, uh, I'll be up at an easel. Um, so hopefully when you feel like you've mastered this beginning painting with paint box, you can move on to my more advanced lessons, but these are really fun, pretty, quick little lessons and you can just break the ice with you learning how to paint, not being afraid of it. I have a lot of students that come in um, very afraid. I think a lot of times they're afraid to paint in front of other people because it is a little small group class. And of course, all the other artists in here in the class are so friendly. They quickly realize that this is not a place where there's a lot of judgment or criticism. It's a very friendly, friendly studio is what I hear all day, every day. I'm going to reach back over here. I like variety, as I was saying. I'm going to pick up this dark umber brown and let's just sprinkle some around. It kind of gives it some depth. I don't want to get too crazy, but I'd love to get just a little depth in there. All right, so that is it for the background. Uh, you know what, I, I think I realized that I also, as, as well as dark, I added some kind of light areas. Maybe that's too light, let me go back to that red. Just kind of plain, giving it a pretty little background. Okay, so I think that we will stop there. I'll meet you back at step three when you're ready. Let's start step three and that is going to be the leaf and the acorn. So let's start with the leaf. I usually start in oil painting with what is behind and then add the item in front. Because of the sculptural thickness of the oil painting, you wouldn't, if we did it the other way around, it would look like the leaf was sitting in front of the acorn and that would look a little awkward. So we're gonna start with the leaf. And so we're going to make, let's start with three shades of that yellow gold. So our lemon yellow up here, we're gonna pick up a little of that and that's gonna be just a little too cool and lemony. We're gonna mix it then with some of the ochre. Well, that immediately got a little dark, so I'm gonna use that perhaps as the, um, let me add a little white to that. And that will be the medium, our medium color. So we're gonna make a light, 
color to go here and a dark one to go here. So that's kind of a medium color. Let me go back to the lemon and a little bit of the yellow ochre, a little less this time. There we go, a little better. And that's going to be our light color. I don't think I made enough of that because, as I recall, this leaf took a good bit of paint when I did my practice one here. So that's that pretty light gold yellow. I may come back later and add a little white highlight. We'll talk about that later. But I've got this nice light yellow. I've got the medium yellow. And then I'm going to do one that's a little darker. So I'm going to take a little less lemon, a little bit of the ochre, and we're going to add a little of that chocolate brown, which is called burnt umber. And that is going to be the dark. And let's start laying it down. So I'm gonna start with the lightest color first. I'm just gonna sweep that brush up and we're gonna lay it down. And I'm gonna just start putting it in most of the areas here. We can add lights and darks into this later. Just, I'm using kind of long strokes going in the direction of the veins of the leaf, you know, the direction of the, um, I guess you wouldn't call it petals, the direction of the grain of the leaf. I'm not sure what you would call that. So, pretty much using that yellow this time for most of the whole leaf. Drag it around that little acorn. Pretty long strokes. Super busy in this building I'm in today. My old, my old building here in a little part of Louisville that we call St. Matthew's. And uh, my studio is one of the oldest buildings in St. Matthew's. And this was one of the largest potato growing parts of America, so more potatoes than Idaho were grown right here in Louisville, Kentucky, and probably in the mid-1850s, early 1850s to mid-1850s, uh, then a lot of this land started becoming, uh, because of the farms, there started, you know, general stores started popping up and a railroad came through to pick up the potatoes. So I'm in this beautiful old building in the middle, kind of in the heart, what we call the heart of St. Matthews. So the building's busy today. I'm picking up a little white. I told you we were going to come back and talk about that white later. Let's throw that white highlight in there so we can get that to blend in there a little bit. So, you know, you'll hear me talk a lot about the highlights and shadows making your painting. So, on the flip side of that, I'm going to take this pretty shadow color we made and I'm going to start just kind of. That, that actually looks a little too brown or gold. I'm going to put a little of that red red brown called burnt sienna. Oh, that could be a little too much. Hmm. There we go. Kind of soften that up. And I think before I go too much further, I'm going to put the little center vein here to the stem part of that leaf. Um, just drag that through here. Kind of give it that center vein. And then same thing here, just it, those little veins give it just the littlest bit more realistic detail. That one got a little thick. And I didn't mention, but if you see here, I was pushing this color really up close to the brown background, but not directly into it. So you didn't, I tried not to pick up the brown. If you did, you know, the yellow and the brown aren't going to make a big mess when they mix. But um, I come back later and I'll kind of touch up those little gap areas that I leave. Uh, so although I paint kind of fast, I do go pretty slowly and accurately right in here where I'm going right one color up next to the other. 
so. Um, I don't think we used much of this medium color. Let's put some more in there. And then we'll come back in the final step. Step four is always where I come back and finish up a little bit. But I think I like what I have so far. Let's, let's go on to the acorn. The uh, cap of the acorn, I'm going to use this um, umber brown, the dark umber chocolate brown. I'm going to put just a little white with it. Then I'm going to take a little more of that umber brown. We're going to make two shades. So there's a little bit lighter shade at the top of the cap and then down here at the bottom underneath, we have a little darker shade. I always like to line up my shades, kind of light to dark. Makes it easier to, when you start painting. Okay, so there we go. I'm gonna take some of that yellow, maybe wash my brush off here and get some of that yellow off. All right, so let's pick up the lighter brown, the top of the acorn. Just kind of tap that on there and I'll show you how to get some texture. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that reddish sienna that looked a little choppy. And then I'm going to go reach for the dark and start putting that in down here. So once I get it covered, that little cap is so cute on an acorn. If there's anybody that doesn't think an acorn's pretty cute. Um, so we're gonna get that cap on there. I think I just knocked out my dark. That happens a lot. I started tapping too many times. And, and speaking of tapping, I'm now tapping with the corner of my brush. So I'm making little textured um, kind of bumps on the top of that little acorn. Gives it a little life like that. I think that's so cute. And then also I'm going to take the dark brown and just put it on the chisel end of my brush. So there's a little chisel end here. And just kind of drag it a little bit like this to give it that little rim, a little hat, the little cap. Like I said, we'll come back in the next step and see if there's anything we want to fix as we finish up. But I'm going to now move into the pretty kind of chestnut red on the acorn. So I'm going to reach over to that same burnt sienna and uh, we'll probably use that for most of the acorn. I'm going to make a darker for the shadow side with the burnt sienna and the umber. Looks like I'm going to need a little more of the umber, so I'm going to reach across here. Since I don't have anybody in here with me today, nobody's helping me reload my paint. We'll have to have you meet some more of my students in the next lesson. There we go. We're going to just put a nice dark. Let's start. Let's start with that dark. I'm just going to go down here along the bottom. And then I'm going to move right into that pretty, that pretty, pretty burnt red. And we're going to put that on there for the rest of the acorn. And then I'm going to throw the highlight on at the end. over, get a little white right on the end of my brush, pull it down here. Whoops, that's a little too bright. There. 
You'll notice as you study paintings more and more that there are very few white highlights, very, very few. The artist will reserve that lightest highlight, maybe in one place. I think on the finished painting, I had it right up there in the leaf so that the secondary highlight is going to be on the acorn. We just You have to kind of choose not too many highlights or get, the painting will get too busy. And then I'm going to make a shadow color underneath the acorn by taking the ultramarine blue and the umber, chocolate umber brown. Mix those two together. Now you can get the black out, the black from your tube, from your kit of paints. I'm just in the habit of making black my blacks um, because so often black is another sh is actually another shade. It's actually a shade of green or red. Rarely other is it truly black. So I've gotten in the habit over the years to just make. It's easier to just make a black. But sometimes you'll see a shadow that's pretty dark. Just gonna get it right in there up to that acorn. And then I think I'm gonna take the chocolate umber brown just by itself and tap a little bit under this leaf so we can kind of think that there's a light source. Maybe the sun's kind of coming this way and lighting up the top of the leaf and throwing a shadow underneath it over here. And if you don't have those lights and shadows, it's not gonna look very um, dimensional. And that's how I answer my students all day when they say something about wanting dimension. Why did they say, why does my painting look kind of flat? And the answer is always going to be, let's double check your highlights and your shadows. So, oh, we're moving right along on this little project. I feel like this acorn is so much brighter and prettier. I'm going to see if maybe I didn't take the burnt sienna and add just a little bit. Let me scoop up some of this gold we have up here and make it a little brighter. I'm going to just scoop up a little more of that gold. There we go. I like that better. I think it's just blending into the background so much. So I made that, took that burnt sienna and added some of the gold that we made. And we're going to lighten that whole thing up. That's much better. I think you all will agree with that. There we go. Now we have a pretty red acorn in there. And I will let you all get caught up. And then we'll talk about finishing up some little details and things that I already see that are kind of uh, in need of repair. So we'll talk about that in step four. Okay, so while, uh, while we were taking a break, I noticed some things that I really do want to change about my drawing here. For example, I didn't really come in enough to make these pretty segments on the leaves. So I'm going to just carve those out a little prettier, especially this one down here. I don't think I got that very well. There, it's a little better. Just tweaking that. And I also think that, I, you know, I like that the little cap on the acorn kind of comes over the top of the acorn and then you can see it there. I don't think my little cap came out far enough here, so I'm gonna pick up, I'm gonna make that a little bigger. And just kind of make sure that that cap fits that acorn a little better because my acorn is so much bigger here too. It's a, a big acorn. And just tapping. We usually, uh, when my guests are here, we're usually telling stories and laughing. And I'm trying to think of any acorn or <laughs> oak leaf stories I have that I'll think of something. We'll think of some beautiful painting to in, uh, include when my students have done or um, tell you a story. So, like I said, some of you are all over the world, so you might want to understand more about fall here in the United States or in Kentucky. So I will add something to make the video fun and memorable. Let's add the highlight back on that little guy right there. See, it's, it's a little too bright. I'm gonna kind of tone that down. Oh, that's, that's getting prettier. Just 
just kind of touching that highlight a little bit. And I also want just a little bit of highlight on the top of that acorn. If that sun's kind of coming from this upper left corner here, just a little bit of light on that. And then I'm going to go back and add back in that whiter highlight that I had here. Not too white. I'm going to grab a little yellow and just move that over, but it really makes a difference to have pretty highlights and pretty shadows. And I think that that's it. When you all are happy with yours, be sure to sign it. A lot of times I'll just take the corner of this little sh sharp corner of this little brush and dip it into something dark like this black. And you can just put your initials on there. K, K, G, and hopefully somebody will enjoy this as a little gift for Thanksgiving Day or a little hostess gift. You wrap it up in a little package, and somebody can hang it on their book or prop it up in their bookshelf. And uh, these little paintings make great gifts. So post your picture on Facebook. And let me see what you've done. And uh, we can all talk about it and share comments. And we hope you enjoyed that project. Um, I'm gonna add one more little thing here, kind of round this out a little bit. And round this out a little bit here. Just pretty, making those ends pretty. And I think I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, one more thing. Oops, I'm almost ready to say goodbye, but then I realized I just really want to brighten up the top of that acorn. It's just looking kind of dull. So I put a little more red and yellow in there. And then one more thing. I'm going to lighten up underneath and take a little bit lighter brown underneath. The, I had that shadow kind of too far over. So let's see if we lighten that up a little bit underneath there. We can see that have that acorn stand out a little more. There we go. Much better. I'm a little happier now that acorn is showing up like that. And so I think we can say we're going to wrap up the project. And uh, I'm looking forward to next month's projects and my guest artists. And we'll have a lot of fun here in the studio and meet you back here then. So come back and join us. Okay. I hope you liked that little project. It was fun. I think all of the projects are fun and I spend a lot of time trying to decide what to paint each month. There's so many choices out there and uh, I'll just keep coming up with ideas that I hope you all enjoy. And again, I hope it makes a nice little gift for someone or for yourself. And uh, the important thing is that I hope you're learning. I hope you're enjoying oil painting. It's, it's changed my life and my students all say the same thing. It's a wonderful creative outlet. And oils are a joy to work with, so we hope you're catching up. If you have any questions, send them in to us at your paint box service. And um, we hope that you'll join us next month. Take care.